All right, hey everybody, it's Charlie Craven, and uh, I'm just sitting here finishing up an order, and I figured I might as well film this one for you, because uh, this is a fly you don't see every day. Uh, this fly is called a Dorato Hair's Ear, D-O-R-A-T-O, -O. Um, and I think the guy's name is Bill Dorato, um, who invented this, um, and it's a dry fly hair's ear, and, and sort of a, a cool little fly, um, reminiscent of the Adams, um, brown and grizzly hackle fiber tail, brown and grizzly hackle, Hair's mass dubbing for the body, and then uh, wood duck wings. Um, kind of a nice buggy little pattern, um, sort of fun to tie. And I'm on uh, number, this will be number 45 that I tie for you today. Uh, so I've got it down pretty good right now. Uh, so strike while the iron's hot, and I'll show you how to do this one. Um, so I'm going to pull this out and put in a bare hook. And I'm going to tie this on a uh, um, these are 16s. I did 12s, 14s, and 16s uh, for this order. Um, I say 16, 100 SPBL. And I'm going to start with some, some Vivas 14 knot. This is wood duck gold. Um, brown would work fine also. I'm going to start this thread just up behind the eye. You can see I've got some dubbing on my fingers. That's what keeps getting on the hook. Try to get that out of there. So I'll start the thread just behind the eye, and I'm going to come all the way back to the bend. And at that point, I've got already prepped here on my desk from this batch um, a brown and a grizzly spade hackle feather. Um, and I'm going to grab one of them, doesn't matter which one, first. And I'm going to take all oh, six or eight fibers and peel them off so that the tips are even. Measure those about a shank length long. And tie those in at the bend just with a single turn. And then I'll take, uh, in this case, the grizzly, and I'll do the same thing. I'm going to peel a little clump out here. Try to do this where you can see it, get those tips so that they're even. And peel those off in a little bundle. And I'll even the tips of the grizzly up with the tips of the brown. And then I'm going to undo that turn of thread, and I'll tie them in just stacked on top of each other, like so. And I'll come forward over those butt ends. They're short enough that I don't need to uh, to trim them off. Um, so now the wing. The wing is the only uh, uh, sort of unusual part of this. And what we want is a wood duck feather, uh, which is in just painfully hard to find these days. If you know somebody that hunts ducks, um, they can get you some. But it's commercially available for, since COVID, um, they have been rare, rare. Uh, and actually the guy that uh, Asked me to tie this order for him. I told him I'll do him with with uh, mallard flank dyed wood duck because I couldn't get any real wood duck, um, and he sent me a bunch of his. So uh, I've got this nice batch. Um, but you can see wood duck is sort of a nice gold color, really nice vermiculations on it. Uh, and what I'm looking for is a feather that has got pretty square tips here across the top. Um, and what I want to do, try to get this where you can see it, is I'm going to pull all the fibers up and kind of pull everything from that point back so that I've got everything about the same length. There will always be a little variation. You can see this top edge has got a few short ones. Um, and you could pull those out if you were so inclined, like so. So I've got a fairly square tip feather. And all this stuff on the bottom, I'll just strip off so I've got bare stem. Um, now I'm going to leave my thread hanging. It's gotten a little flat there. About two eye lengths back from the eye. And that's going to be our wing placement. What I want to do to this feather first um, is come in and I want to trim this center stem out. Let me see if I can get it where you can see it here. Like so. So I've got a little space there. Um, and that'll take that stem out. And we just want to make sure that this length from that cut up is long enough to make the wing, which is going to be about a shank length. Maybe just a little proud of a shank length long. And I'll tie this in, bump that thread back just a bit. I'm going to tie this in, and I kind of set it on my near side. Um, and I'll hold the thread toward me here. I'm going to pull this down to length, and you can see that just bundles up into a nice little clump. And I want it about, about a shank length. Like I said, I like to make them just a little, little proud. Um, and you can grab another hook. And measure them. That's, yep, a little proud. You know, it's a shank and a quarter, maybe. Um, these wings are a little wispy, so if you make them at the exact right length, uh, one shank length long, they kind of get buried in the hackle. Um, and I do like them to show. Um, 
So I made that little band of thread there. Now one of the tricks here, so I'm going to make that band of thread, then I'm going to come forward a couple turns, right back up to the base of the wing, and then I'll lift these butt ends up, and I'm going to set my scissors in here from the back, and lay the feather back down and cut at a flat angle. That'll give me a little taper into those butt ends. Now I can undo those wraps and continue down over those butts and end up with a sort of a nice pre-made taper there for my body. Nice and smooth. Um, so now I wet my fingers just a tiny little bit and I'm going to sweep those wings up and back and I'll bring the thread in front and I'm going to build a little thread down here. Um, and this is a fairly soft feather. It's not as stiff as hair, but um, really this is done a lot like uh, hair wings on a humpy or a, or a wolf. Uh, I'm going to build a thread dam right up against the front edge. And you can see as I make those wraps, as the thread, a red thread comes on top, it's in front of the wing. But on bottom, I push it back behind and it'll stand that wing up. And you can see how nice and speckly that wing is. Just beautiful. So now, um, to gather that, you can see I've got some, a lot of front to back flare. I'm going to take one turn up against the back edge, and that'll regroup that a bit. And then I just turn the, the hook in the vise a bit, turn the vise, and I'm going to divide that wing in half. And I just sort of part it, and my thread's hanging behind the wings. And I'm going to go from back to front, from near to far, two turns, one right over the top of the other, and then a wrap a thread around the hook. And you can see that's going to be the start of our X. Then I'll grab my near wing and go front to back, near to far, so that I have divided those wings. See what they look like from the, from the top and bottom. And then I can kind of stand them up. Usually end up with a few. See these couple of crazies over here? You can fight with those all day or you can just get rid of them. And that's all I do to those wings. I don't post them. Every now and again, if you get a kind of a ratty feather, you can do a single post wrap around the bottom like you would with a hair wing. <clears throat> but if you've got a decent feather, just, just a set of X wraps will do the job just fine. So then I'm going to take some hair's mass dubbing. Um, and what I'm using here is actually Nature Spirit hair's mass dubbing, um, which has got a tiny bit of antron in it. Um, and it just dubs really nicely. It's really buggy. This is the only commercial stuff I know that's actually made out of real hair's mask and not rabbit fur. Um, but really a nice dubbing. Kind of dubs down tightly uh, for a fly like this. And this fly's got um, kind of a chunky little body by design. So I'm going to apply that dubbing <clears throat> and I'll come all the way back here to the bend and start with a fairly fat first couple turns <clears throat> because again I want to fatten this body up so if I start off super thin um, I end up with either a very severe taper or just a standard taper <clears throat> excuse me and you can see what I did there I've got a little tapered body but it's fairly blocky you know fairly chunky little body um, now I'm going to take a brown and grizzly hackle feather and I've got them paired up already here I'm going to prep the butt ends. I've got them stacked one on top of the other inside to outside just as if they had come off the cape that way. And I'm going to strip oh, a half shank or, sh or so, maybe slightly less than a half shank of bare stem on the bottom. You can see I've got my, my brown on the bottom and my grizzly on top. I'm going to tie these in along my near side right at the front edge of the body and wrap over them right up to the base of the wing. And then I want to make sure that these stems don't extend past the hook eye. And they're just right there at the edge, so I'm going to nip those down just a bit so that they're short of the hook eye. There's a good angle. And I'll sweep those wings back, and I'm going to come forward and wrap over those stems right up to the eye, and then back again to the wing, and back up to the eye. I've got a single guard here there that's going to be in my way, so I'm going to get him out of there. <clears throat> now I'm going to wrap both these feathers at the same time, and you can kind of sweep those wings forward if you need to. And I like the first wrap to sort of overlap that dubbing a bit, and I try to get three turns behind the wings, and then sweep those wings back, 
put the next turn directly in front, and then three turns in front. I'll pull that feather straight up, bring the thread straight up and straight down. And that gives us a, that nice, clean little hackle collar. We'll reach in and trim those feather stems out. A little dubbing on that thread still. Build a nice smooth thread head to cover those butt ends. And then I'll whip finish. Um, I don't know if you guys can see, there's one crazy fiber right there. I'm just going to realign him with the group, get back in line, conform. But sort of a cool buggy little little fly. Um, pretty simple to tie, but you can see how that uh, that would be a small stream killer. Um, just generic. It could be a caddis, it could be a mayfly, it could be a lot of different stuff. Um, just, you know, they say uh, trout eat a lot of stuff that's about yay long and kind of brownish gray. That's kind of brownish gray. Um, lots of little speckles and models in it. Um, We'll add a little shot of head cement here while we're sitting here. Turn the fly upside down and let that run back in there. Make sure we get all the way around. And that, my friends, is our Dorado Hairs here. I uh, hope you enjoyed that. That's uh, the first video I filmed for a while. So um, you can see I've, I've strayed from my uh, trademark black t-shirt for this one because I was not wearing a black t-shirt and I just figured I'd throw this one out there for you. So um, I'll try to get back in the swing of it and be a little bit more professional, go back to the black. But uh, for those of you that bitch and moan about the black, here's a, uh, uh, this is a light gray t-shirt that uh, made by Vori. If uh, uh, if you guys don't have a Vori t-shirt, you should get one. I don't sell them, but man, I wish I did because I love them. Um, anyway, there's my little product placement for the day. Um, that and some uh, some hair's mask dubbing and brown and grizzly hackle. You'll be ready to go. Tie up some Dorado hairs here, see what you think. I uh, hope you enjoyed that one. That was kind of fun. Thanks for watching, guys. You guys take care.